The yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. To New York, to New York. Put the yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. Yo, it's in New York. To New York, to New York. And welcome to Crash Chords Autographs. This week, Matt had the opportunity to chat with Justin Doyle, the lead singer and guitarist for the rock band Adage. A new band out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, they released their debut EP, Defined, on August 19th, available to stream and download. They will also be featured in an upcoming Battle of the Bands concert held at Ziggy's Main Hall in Winston-Salem on October 10th. So, in covering his musical upbringing, to some thoughts on the new release... To a cheerful aside on cars, here's presenting Matt Storm and Justin Doyle. Hello, Justin. Yeah, this is Justin. How's it going? Hey, this is Matt. Um, thanks for uh, agreeing to do the interview for my podcast. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, Sean had sent me your stuff. The The new EP is really great. Um, I really dig the tracks. And um, when's the official release date on that? Uh, it's going to come out August 19th. August 19th. Awesome. Very cool. Um, and so I know that you've probably been doing quite a bit of press to promote it. Um, um, I was looking you guys up online and I didn't find any other records. Is this your first official release through Pavement? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, we we were a band and uh, basically Pavement scooped in and said, we'd like to help you guys push what you guys already have. So That's, yeah. that's great. And um, so I imagine you'll also probably be going out on tour soon to support the the new record. Um, are you going to do like the whole U.S.? You have a a certain a trajectory set for your for your next tour. Um, we're setting it up, but we don't know any of the details yet. Um, we're still hashing out where we where we can go, when we can go, and all all the all the little minute details in between. But we are planning to in the future. Cool. That's great. Um, as a, a music fan of, of metal and of heavy rock, um, which had been kind of lacking in the recent years, it's nice to hear bands like you and your, um, your, um, th- uh, another band that's on your label, uh, Emperors and Elephants, you guys play this kind of heavy rock with great singing that, you know, doesn't really exist anymore. It's a lot of screaming in, you know, screaming through the whole track and it's, you know, I like to hear lyrics. I don't like to hear screaming. So it's kind of nice to hear a band like you guys that, you know, you use screaming for emphasis, but you're not screaming through the whole track. You're not unintelligible. You're still singing melodically. And, you know, you've got something to say, uh, which I, as a fan of music, quite appreciate. Oh, well, I, I appreciate it too. I mean, that's that's one of the things that we we strive to do in every song. I mean, if if we can still rock your face out, and have you home on the tune later then you know i mean why not why not try that you know so we're <laughs> we we pride ourselves on trying to come up with things that are you know hooky and and, and whatnot but still be heavy and fun to play because we're all we're all metal fans too we just do what we can do best and uh screaming throughout the entire song and you know it, i can scream but i just i'd, I'd much rather sing <laughs> right sure um, and so how long have you been singing for? Um, I imagine since a young age, that seems to be the, the cliche answer from a lot of the musicians I've spoken to lately. Um, but when did you start? Um, yeah, it was, it was when I was a kid. Um, I have maybe a slightly different background just because both of my parents were professional gospel singers. So I grew up in a, you know, a church environment and always singing with my parents and stuff growing up through church and you know one day it was it was just one of those deals where dad turned around and he was like hey you actually sing that on key like this is something you could probably do you know for fun or whatever and then uh then i got introduced to guitar and then it just took off a whole different direction from what i had originally <laughs> been been raised in and whatnot but but yeah it's it started at an early age for me um, are you incredibly religious growing up in a gospel background or? 
Am I? I'm sorry. Say again. Oh, um, I was asking how religious you were, considering the gospel background. Are you a religious person? Uh, I, I, you know, it's it's a strange question to answer. You know, it's it's one of those where I do have, uh, you know, my structure and my uh, my moral beliefs growing up as a kid. But you know, I don't go to church every Sunday and whatnot now. But you know, as far as belief structure and everything, and how I want to live my life. Um, you know, there's a lot of good things from it. There's a lot of kind of not so good things from it. So I try <laughs> to balance in there. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's one of those, you know, thin lines you walk on. But for me, it's it's just, if you, you know, if you treat people well, then you'll get treated back well. So, Well, that makes sense. I mean, you know, you want to. You want to do what's best for you, ultimately. Um, are, uh, I imagine as singers, your parents probably are a fan of your music, not a fan of your music. Do they not really listen? Oh, no. They uh, Growing up, they hated it. You know, <laughs> I had a full stack in my bedroom, and I was, you know, playing as heavy and as loud as I could while, you know, they were in the other room. So they hated that side of it. Um, but as far as now, get, getting to hear it, and there's, you know, so much separation between it, you know. Sure. <laughs> it's not playing while they're trying to go to sleep. You know, they're a lot more keen to it. And, you know, they, they do like it, you know, because it's, uh, it, for the most part, the songs are just songs, you know. They're not they're not anything more than that to, to them or whatnot. So, I mean, it's, it's a good mix. It's a good thing, though. And uh, where do you draw your, in- obviously, your influences? I could probably guess a few of them but you know where do you draw a lot of your influence from as a singer maybe as a band oh um i absolutely loved uh breaking benjamin you know uh you know three days grace thornley was a huge influence for me uh low pro you know the the early 2000s when i was really kind of kicking in and learning how to do all this that those were my main influences you know, coming up, and I have much older influences as well, but those are my mains. Yeah, I can I I can remember the day when I found out that Breaking Benjamin actually broke up, that the, the band had separated, and then the lead singer had gone to kind of do his own thing. I was so bummed because I've been listening to them pretty much since since high school, since their first record. So that was kind of a bummer. But I can definitely see the parallels between your style and theirs, which is again, one of my favorite things about the the record is that it's a familiar sound to me, but not, not a sound, not something I've heard before, but something similar to what I've heard. And so I enjoy it. Um, and, uh, the, 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 the other influences you listed, you can definitely hear in the music. Um, did you always want to do heavy metal? It sounds like it from what you were telling me about how you, how you were coming up with listening to music loud and late. Was, it all, was metal always kind of the clear path, or were you kind of just dabbling to see where you'd go? No, I, it, the, when I first started playing instruments, uh, the the first instrument that I actually played was bass guitar, and uh, I actually played in a funk band like all through high school, and you know, bass and funk, I I had to do the most as far as playing wise, so so I had to get really good very quickly, and um, it was you know, for picking up an instrument you've never done before, it it came pretty natural to me. Um, I had an acoustic guitar that I started to learn on after that and played a lot of classical. Um, but, you know, through peer pressure and meeting your friends and whatnot, just hanging out with people, my first friend that had an electric guitar and had a Nirvana, you know, CD or tape, actually. It might have been a tape. I don't know. <laughs> but... You know, he played that, and he was playing the riffs in the song, and he's like, it's really easy to play, but it sounds cool. You know, it's awesome. It's really fun to play, and your classical stuff is eh, kind of boring. Let's let's play this for a little bit. So I actually joined my first rock band, but uh, after learning and playing several different styles. So I never knew that the path was rock until I really got an electric guitar and then I was like oh okay now I see suddenly it was all clear <laughs> it was all it was all clear man <laughs> and so how did uh, how did adage come to be well I had originally uh, lived in Atlanta and had done some touring and whatnot from you know previous bands and 
And uh, basically, we I needed to revamp. I needed because I had been on the road and and I was a lot younger, so I didn't know how to be on the road and how to really take care of myself. So we all just went out and partied and had the you know times of our our lives at a very very young age. But it took its toll, and I needed to step away for a while. So I decided to pack all my stuff up and move near some family here in North Carolina for about two years or whatnot. And uh, then I got the the get out and find some guys to start playing ad or whatnot. You know, uh, just a guitar player. That's all I wanted to be um, at the at that time. And found these guys. They already had kind of a group together. They had a couple of music. So we got together. Uh, it was a year ago from this month sometime, sometime in August last year. We all got together and started playing, and we all just kind of clicked. You know, it was just an easy transition back into it and started writing and came up with the EP, and here we are. That's great. That's very cool. Um, I love the, the modern world and how, you know, it used to be you'd have to, like, put up a poster in your local college or community center with tearaway phone numbers so people could call you and, like, hey, you play guitar. Now it's just go on Craigslist, open an ad, hope someone calls, you know, stuff like that, which I think I think modern technology has kind of revolutionized the way bands come to be and come together, uh, you know. Yeah, definitely. And and, and the, the search, even though it being on Craigslist, uh, you find people quicker, you also have to weed out a lot of people too. So, you know, it was, it was a process, you know, finding the right people. And I've always found out that, uh, you know, having the best technical players slash having the best people that you get along with, it always works out better when you're with somebody you get along with. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter if someone's the best drummer you've ever heard. If he's a dick, like, then what's the point? Who cares? Right. You know, who wants to play with that yeah. guy? <laughs> yeah. We know this guy can't have the same chops, but he's going to be there every day. He's going to show up and we're, you know, we, we like him, you know, yeah. he's a dick, so. and you know, we, not, not saying, you're not saying that, you know, every great musician is, <laughs> is terrible. no, of course not. Of course. You just got to find the right people with your, with your ideas and stuff. So and it all works out once you do. Yeah. And I mean, it's also one of those things where, you know, everyone, nobody's perfect. I mean, if you've stopped learning and getting better, then what's the point? Why play? You know, you're always growing, you're always getting better. So, you know, if you've got a savant in the band, what's the point? Because they're just going to get bored and probably go anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't need to invade in your band. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, um, for our listeners who may not be completely familiar with you guys, since you're relatively new, besides playing music, do you have any passions or pastimes that you personally are super into aside from music? I love cars, man. Like old muscle cars. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm huge on them. Um, uh, anything V8, I, I love getting into and driving. I love car shows. And, and uh, I just... I love it. I, every time I have a chance to watch anything on Velocity or anything like that, I, I'm always watching that stuff. <laughs> cool. And do you own do you own any muscle cars? I do. Um, it's not an old muscle car, but it is a muscle car in itself. It's a, I may lose some fans and they gain some in another way, but it's a Mustang. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So sorry, Chevy guys. It was what I could afford. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, a nice muscle car is a nice muscle car. I mean, I, I've always kind of been on the outside of cars. Like, you know, I watched my fair share of car shows. And like growing up, I always wanted a Porsche 911 just because it was just that car that, that like, I always saw. It. You know, it's just a, a beautiful car that doesn't really change over the years. But uh, but I see nothing wrong with, with owning a Mustang. Those are pretty amazing and powerful cars, so. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's got some stuff done to it, so it's not completely just null and void. It's it it, it makes a little noise, <laughs> you know, between the guitar playing and the uh, car driving in the driveway. I get some complaints every now and then. But I was gonna say you you're clearly a guy who likes volume. That is for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast and loud. That's that's the way. That's the way to go. <laughs> um. So. Uh, 
you you've only the band's only been together about a year um the the name adage i i racked my brain to try and figure out off the top of my head what the the name means um is there a story behind the naming of the band does it mean something to you personally no it was actually just um we you know when we all started getting together and writing and writing music and everything and, and getting it all together and everything we were like we've got to, we got to call ourselves something so we all just came up with random, you know, random shit that we had come up off with the top of our head. And, and uh, we were all sitting around just having notebooks and notebooks of just random stuff, just whatever, whatever, whatever. And what we did was we just tried to pick something that basically was kind of just a one word phrase that would describe what the group of us was. And the definition of adage is basically a group of people coming to a common experience, you know, like a, like a proverb. So we thought that was kind of cool. The adage was short, easy, looked good, written down. And it, it just kind of described what we were. It was just a common group came together to hang out. So, you know, it, it kind of came easy to us. Nice. Uh, spawned the, the EP title, which is defined because there's two reasons behind that is, uh, you know, it, it defines what the band is, and also everyone that has ever seen us has always says, uh, "What what does adage mean?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, defining. So it, you know, it was it's one of those things that we we found a little humor in and, and named everything after that. But that's that's actually pretty incredible. I enjoy that. Um, <laughs> my personal favorite track on the record is actually "Hold On." Um, there's something about that track that really hooks me. Um, do you have a favorite song to perform or are they kind of all your children? You like them all equally? Um, I like any more the best. As far as live performances, any more, um, hands down for us is just a blast to play because it's from the start as heavy as it's going to get, you know, all the way to the end. And it, for me, it's just, it's a blast to play and sing and high energy. So it's, that one I'd hold slightly above hold on because hold on's pretty pretty fun to play and sing too. Cool. Um and so obviously if you guys are going on tour soon you've only got the five track E P. Do you have other songs that you play, stuff that you've been working on but haven't released yet, or do you fill it with, with other material? Um, we actually have, you know, probably twenty songs that we have had written. But um when we first got together to do, to do this E P um, we, we did everything out of pocket on a weekend. So basically the EP is a matter of, you know, raising money between four guys and spending the weekend in a, in a really, really nice high end studio and really dedicating like every second of every minute to making sure that it sounded good. And, and uh, you know, we, we have plenty of other songs. We are also writing towards our next full length album that we will release maybe this time next year. Oh great. That's awesome. Maybe sooner, maybe not. We're not we're not sure on the details on that either, but you know, we have we have plenty to pull from. We're just trying to put the best of the best together, you know, to release at one time. So That's great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Cuz I mean, I've I've seen bands in the past um at small venues and they play their whole five or six songs that they have and then they've still got like five minutes so they play another song a second time and that never really goes over so well <laughs> oh yeah we no, we have like two hours worth the live set material we just we put together you know a five track basically kind of a just an ep just to get things rolling and get things started and and we're surprised that it's doing so well and, yeah uh, it, it's you know, I, it's oh go ahead yeah, it's it's just a really cool feeling. It's to to not expect anything and to go into it just like wow, people are really digging this stuff. It's really cool. It's a really cool feeling. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that I think the reason you know uh, a band like yours can really get some legs now is because. There are lots of bands like this. I mean, you named a ton of them that were out in the 2000s, but a lot of them fell to the wayside because a lot of them didn't have longevity or they didn't have a certain something that made them stick. But, you know, your your band, I think, is in a place where a lot of those bands have disappeared and only the really defined bands are, are still around and you guys have 
the same kind of level of talent, skill, and sound to compete with that kind of music now because it's not everywhere like it was in the 2000s. You know, you actually have to look for for bands like yours and some others that that you had named. So I think that's what's going to give you guys your staying power, and then it's just what you do after that. You know. Yeah, and 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 we, you know, we loved those bands growing up, and and it and it sucks because you don't hear a lot of it on the radio today or really much anywhere. Um, you know, that, that's, that's just that style, uh, you know, the style that we fall into and it's, and it's hard to find really good bands that, that really stick within that, that makeup of how you create the song, you know, in the, in the same format, I guess, or formula and whatnot. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it just seems like, I don't know. It just came easy to us. That's just so much what, of what we grew up and loved that, you know, we, that's the music we love the most. So, you know, we, of course we miss hearing it and hope that we can definitely start that coming back. Cause to, to us, that was the greatest music that we had. Yeah. Well, there's also something about a music, music like that, that has an emotional impact that a lot of bands that are out now don't really have. I mean, a lot of the mainstream Indian rock bands, there's some great ones out there, but a lot of them feel kind of hollow. Whereas music like yours, there, you, there's clearly emotion behind the lyrics that are written and the songs that are the music that's there. You know, it's not just this empty rock and roll that's just kind of there to fill a void. It, there's actually actual purpose to it. Yeah, and, and you know, for for me being um, the writer on most of this stuff and and lyric, lyrically being the sole writer, uh, it, it's just you know, I had so much shit that has happened over the past you know lifetime you know there's no reason that I can't express that through the music I mean to me that's what it's for you know that's that's why I do it you know it's it's, it's physical and mental release you know and, and if for some reason the music falls upon ears that may be going through the same thing or that can apply the song to their life and vent the same way that I am then you know to me that's a that's a mission accomplished for both of us you know for me and the listener sure um do you have when you're writing are you do you have to sit yourself down and kind of focus and concentrate on writing do you write just when the mood strikes you um or is it kind of a little both well it's uh my writing is always guitar based um i'll always sit down and you know write a riff or something and uh and if I really, really like the riff and it has and it has a ton of melody options, um, you know, I always have something that I'm humming along while I'm playing a riff, you know, to figure out if it's something that I can use. Because for the most part, I play and sing at the same time throughout everything, the majority of everything. So I have to make sure that the rhythms are down and that, you know, I can sing on it. And I'll come up with a riff and shoot over probably two or three hundred melody options, and then I, and then I get frustrated. I'll you know I'll put it down for a day or two. I'll come back to it, and I'll musically write the entire song. Um, you know, have the melody set in place, what I want to do, set out my uh, my syllable structure to make sure that it falls within a certain pattern every time. So I'm not singing jumbled words on one verse and and clean on the next so it's for me it's a it's, it's a dedicated process uh, the lyrics usually flow pretty quickly from that point on um i'll sit down and write out you know how the song made me feel or why i'm writing a song or just you know some some shit that happened that day that i'm pissed about or you know whatever it's it, it all ends up making it on paper what what ends up sticking is usually what you know, cohesively works together with the melody and what I'm saying, how the song sounds and feels, and you know, so it's to me it's a process. I feel that it goes quick sometimes, and then sometimes it just takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's just it's day to day, and depending on how you feel that day will determine where where it goes, which I think is a really strong way to write. I mean, not that other ways are wrong, but you know. Uh, as a, a person who's pretty emotional and who emotionally identifies with music very strongly, I like you can always tell when a song was written by someone who actually invested like their heart and soul into it versus something that was kind of thrown away because it sounded kind of catchy, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. And I've listened to songs that has moved me, you know, in, in separate parts of my life. And those were the songs that I still remember. And I still will rock out to them today. Um, and, and that's what I, you know, that's, that's just what I like, you know, that if you can find a moment like that where you can be vulnerable enough to put your, put your feelings and everything that's happened to you on paper, I mean, that's the best event, like for me, personally possible. I mean, there's no other way for me to, to really vent out with that, with that much success. Awesome. Um, and so, so you, you had mentioned, we were talking earlier that you kind of, you guys were just kind of picked up by pavement. Did you, saw, did you search them out or did they spot you guys at a show and pick you up? Well, it was a funny situation actually, because when we got the EP back and, um, we got it mastered, um, it sounded really, really good to us. And, and we said, you know, this is, we're just going to take a shot in the dark. So what I did was I put together like just a little promo pack and I sent it out through Facebook, just randomly messaged like every single record label that dealt with our genre of music or that had before and just sent them a private message and said, Hey, do you submit or do you, uh, do you take perfect, per excuse, do you take, um, professionally reported submission? And, uh, I got a few replies and a few, you know, yeah, we'll take a listen, and a bunch of them never responded and whatnot. But Pavement was one of those that said, yeah, shoot them on over. And I shot them over to Link, and, you know, they, they listened to it within a couple of minutes. Um, Mark Noir and I uh, were in discussions about, that, you know, what was going to happen and what he was willing to do and all this good stuff. So it happened really quickly on just like a random note. It was just, hey, what's up? You want to listen? It's cool. <laughs> that's great you know you don't hear a lot of that these days i mean but also it's partly because of the access we have now online i mean you can't there are ways to at least get yourself out to other people pretty easily now online and while the, there's some bad that goes with that there's a lot of good too because you can kind of reach out to people that otherwise back before facebook and some other you know direct messaging uh tools you couldn't really get that information out. You'd have to actually like buy a list of, you know, addresses of recording labels and then send them out like via mail and pay for the postage, which, you know, it's not the same anymore. Now you can just post something online or shoot someone a link and, and it's instant, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, it's a great way to, to stay in touch and, and, and meet new people and, and really give you opportunities that you wouldn't have normally had. Like you said, I mean, it's great. Also, like I've been doing for for this show. So uh, my website has two podcasts, a main show where we review a new album every week, me and two co-hosts, and sometimes we'll have guests on. And then I started a second show recently, which is what this one will be for, where it's just one on one from interview. And the quality of recording comes out really great. You know, it essentially sounds like a radio show online. And you couldn't have done that even five years ago because they didn't have the programs, the technology. And it's kind of awesome to be able to talk to people from all over about music one-on-one -on -one, but over the phone you know oh yeah 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 i mean it's it saves me a lot on gas money <laughs> i'm sure um so you you had said that you guys are you're working on a tour but you don't have the details yet and you you have plans for a full length but you're not sure where it's going is um do you guys have any plans for a music video release do you have a single decided from the new ep yeah, um, hold on. It's the new single. Um, it's there's pre-orders for the album now. You can go to Pavement um, Entertainment on Facebook. You can go through Amazon. You can uh, just you can get the pre-ordered CD there. Um, you can also we're going to have a video release for the single Hold On somewhere around the release date. We're not sure exactly what day it'll be released yet because we're still filming the last set of footage shots that we need um, this coming Saturday. And uh, hopefully we'll have it up right around August 19th along cool. with, the, uh, with the full album. Well, um, if, if you guys get a heads up to when it's going to release and you shoot me an email, I'll be sure to post it on my website too. This way we can get some more people looking at it at the album and at the, uh, 
at the uh, release. And I'll definitely make sure that this episode, the interview goes up before that date too. This way we can make people aware of it. Um, okay, to do, awesome. yeah. do, do what we can to promote. Um, I'm always in favor of promoting the hell out of good music because there's so much crap out there. Like that's, that's the downside to the internet with all this access. You, there's so much more great stuff that couldn't get heard that's now getting heard, but also terrible stuff that should have died can get out too, because it's so easy to put tracks up or throw something down on a Mac, you know? Yeah. And, and, and you can record from your house now. So it's, you know, it's there, you're getting a lot of, you know, yeah. <laughs> I know so, what you're yeah. So it's always nice to hear a band that I really dig and I always like to do whatever I can to promote that because cause good music is always worth sharing. And that's my favorite thing is telling a friend, you know, hey, check out this band. And they come back and say, oh, that was great. You know, I, I love being able to do that. And uh, so I always push to promote when I can uh, whatever bands I think are doing something good. And you guys definitely are doing that. Um, and well, I appreciate that. Uh, hmm. My pleasure. Um, what we did for, you know, what we do for fun, basically. And, you know, I mean, it, it is a lot of hard work and, and what goes into it. But for the most part, it's our dream. So hearing someone, uh, you know, that likes our dream is like, yeah, cool, man. Thanks. <laughs> like, yeah. we love that shit. So thanks a lot. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, thank you for making good music. Um, I'm I'm very excited to see what you guys do. I mean, it's not often these days that I hear a band that I'd not heard before that's brand brand new that I can follow. And I'm always excited when I discover a new band that before their first record hits to be able to follow their trajectory because it's fun. You know, you you want to root out root on a band that that you enjoy. You know, it's so easy to get into a band that's you know like Queen or Alice in Chains or the Rolling Stones bands have been around a while, and it's daunting to dive back into a deep discography. But finding a new band, it's like, oh, cool, something new, and then then you get to to, to kind of ride the wave with them, you know, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, I, and the the new stuff that we're coming out with is, uh, you know, is I, I wouldn't say that it's better than what we have now. But it's better than what we have now. <laughs> I mean, we've had more time as a band, and you know, now we're 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 focused on, you know, really revamping the songs and and making sure they're perfect. And we have plenty of time to do it now, and it, it, they're they're transforming a little bit. But you know, as far as the most part, they will adage will sound like adage. But for the new stuff that we and we still play those that are still at our live sets along with the the five song EP there's still live song shows that we'll be playing um, that are the new songs that we're coming up with. So people will get a chance to, to hear those and see them live before we ever get them, get them released their CD or anything. So it'd be a good chance for people to come out and see it. Cool. That's awesome. Um, and uh, so obviously you said you're planning a tour, but you're not sure where you're headed yet. Is there, if you could, if you had a, a dream location, any city that you could go to, or any state or country, is there like a number one place that you'd love to go if money was no object and you could just show up there and play a show? Um, I would love to play Madison Square Garden. That would be a dream, you know, dream come true just for the sake of the size of it. Sure. Um, we would love to tour the Midwest. The Midwest is really loving on us right now. And we would love to get out and really just hit those places that uh, maybe not every band goes to, um, but really hit some places that kind of raise your eyebrows a little bit. Why are they going there? Like, well, because, man, they, they, we don't, you know, they don't have a lot of bands come through there. Like our area, we don't have a lot of national acts coming through our particular area. So we have to drive, like, way out of the way and, and all this stuff. And it makes it really difficult going to see those shows. And, uh, you know, it really burns you a little bit and burns the music scene. And, you know, really just would love to tour the U.S., go overseas a little bit, you know. In particular, I guess, Madison. Cool. Be- <laughs> well, well, when you guys hit Madison Square Garden, I'll be sure to come see you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'd be... <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Thanks. I'll let you know. <laughs> Um, so you were talking a little bit about cars before and, uh, and, um, what you like to do as a pastime, um, you're, you're way into 
cars. Um, the only car show that I know off the top of my head that I'm super into is Top Gear, the British version. Do you watch that at all? I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's one of those shows that, like, I, I was always into cars as a kid. I owned Hot Wheels and stuff, but... As an adult, you know, a lot of car shows were like just about stats. And I was like, man, I want more than that. But the, the three hosts are such clowns. It's like you can't not be entertained by it. <laughs> I know. You got the, the, the big, tall, curly-headed, uh, goofy dude. Um, uh, Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah. He, he he cracks me up. He, For whatever reason, he and the, uh, the long-haired guy, they, those two just – complete total opposites on the show and they, they annoy each other <laughs> constantly, but you know, they, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's one of my favorite shows to watch. I watched the American one too. Yeah. The American one actually is pretty good. I was a little sour on it at first cause I was like, Oh, what, why are they trying to rip off the British TV? And then I realized like every country has a top gear show. So like they're all over. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And they're actually pretty good. They've done some cool stuff. Yeah. 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 I, I, I love watching random stuff and, I'll sit down with my son and, you know, watch the, he's in the fast cars too. His favorite right now is the Bugatti Veyron. Uh, of course. Good it's taste. A, you know, popular video where a Bugatti races a, uh, a jet in a mile course, basically. And, uh, you know, he'll sit there and just freak out the whole time. And, you know, that was, I, say, I believe that was the top gear episode than one of the British ones. <laughs> And it was a Bugatti versus a Jet. The Jet won, but, you know. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that one. I th- and I thought that was incredible. That the, the Bugatti almost kept up with it, you know. It was kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, he kept up until he had to turn around. And the Jet started diving. Then it was over. You know, you can't, you can't beat the Jet. Things was going like 800 miles an hour. <laughs> so, you know, he caught up. And it was cool, though. But I, I, I love cars. And any kind of really fast. Nice car, but you know the muscle, old muscle, is just where it's at for me. Um, you mentioned you have a son. Is he old enough to enjoy the the music that you've recorded? Um, well, he's six. Um, he does actually. He uh, if he hears one of the songs come on, he he sings along in the back seat, and uh, he really likes um, any more the best because he gets to yell in that song. <laughs> he. He contributes. He's a backseat singer. <laughs> uh, nice. That's that's always fun. I was I was the same way growing up. So it's always fun to hear that. Our, the youth of youth of our country is still holding up that tradition of singing from the backseat. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if you go on tour, would you take him with you? Is that a thing that you would do, or would, you know, would he stay home while you go off to to play music to the masses? Uh, he would probably stay home you know, for, for school purposes and whatnot. Sure. Occasionally I'd love to have him out and, you know, like, look, this is what dad does, man. Look, look at this. <laughs> and, you know, but other than that, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of an adult job. Sure. Know, back along and stuff so, you know, for everything. So not being that small, maybe when he's like a little older, I might bring him out, show him the ropes a little bit. Like this is, this is how a rock show works. Here you go, son. <laughs> <laughs> This room, you stay in here. Don't look at anything. Or <laughs> she's drinking apple juice. You know those kinds of those kinds of things. But you know, other than that, you know he he can he can chill and go to school. <laughs> Has he shown any interest in in music, like in in playing an instrument or singing? Oh yeah, I mean he has I he I he has a drum set. He has a guitar. He uh he basically gets he gets real frustrated like I did when I was real little and I was trying to learn stuff. My, my, my mom tried to get me to play piano and I just threw a fit every time I got near one. So he's kind of in that area. You know, he's like, Meh, I, I'm not as good as you, Dad. Well, you, you know, you don't start out that good, but you got to, like, play. You got to practice. Yeah, that, you got to learn. I'm like, yeah, possibly. <laughs> No, I don't want to do that. I just want to be good now. He, so he's in that stage. He'll he'll snap out of it a little bit later on. Sure, yeah. He'll he'll figure out in the next couple of years where he whether he really wants to stick with it or and if he does, he'll that's when he'll focus and really kind of go somewhere with it. Yeah, I, ima- I imagine that's got to be the great thing about having a dad in a rock band is 
being able to own a drum and a guitar. Like when I was a kid growing up, I loved music and I listened to music. My dad did too, but none of us were musicians. So like at one point, I think when I was eight, I was like, oh, I want a drum set. And my mother's like, good, you can keep it in another house because it can't come here. Good luck with that. <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, well, never mind. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, drums are hard to conceal in a yeah. house. They they make a little bit of noise. <laughs> a little bit, you know. Now you can get those electronic kits, and and all you hear is thuds from the other room. But but yeah, you can plug right in and hear hear the beats and everything. Yeah, which are pretty neat. Yeah. Um. So you mentioned that you uh your area doesn't get a lot of music. Where do you live now? In what area is is it that not a lot of bands tour through? Um. Well. My area is Stoneville, North Carolina, a town of 900 people. Oh, wow. So I drive an hour, at about an hour and 15 minutes to practice one way to practice with the other guys who live in another really super country town, Pilot Mountain. Um, just south of us, probably about 45 minutes to an hour for me, is the Winston Green, Greensboro area. So, I mean, there's a little bit that comes through there. But not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Um, mainly it's local metal, deathcore metal, and, and uh, local country and and whatnot. So it's it's not it's not booming. It's not booming. But we did have Kill Switch and Gates come through a couple weeks ago. That was kind of so. That was a little breath of fresh air coming through. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Do you like going to live shows? Are you still a guy who likes you know getting in the crowd and. And rocking out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I still go to as many as I can, um, especially the locals. You know, um, there's a local band that I like. I mean, I'm 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 trying to get it every time I can. I mean, just because it offers a little support, and I like I like bands. You know, I mean, I like good music. There's no reason not to go see someone if they're just a local band. They may be better than the sign band you spent seventy five dollars to go see. Yeah, no, totally. That's for sure. I mean, that's, that's kind of nice about, you know, living in New York like I do is that the music scene is pretty big here and there are tons of bands of every stripe that play all over. So, and you can pay 20 bucks and see a band that might be better than someone you would have seen at a stadium, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some local bands where that have blown the water out of some of the national acts that I've gone to see throughout my, throughout my life. And it's been like, you know, why, are, why don't we you know, switch the switch the tables around and see how these guys would do in that spot. I mean, that'd be ridiculous. Right? Yeah. Get yeah. get those get those band those local bands up on a bigger stage. You know, and get and get other people to see them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy what what happens when you take the same band from a from a bar show and put them up on a on a on a really big stage in front of a, a lot of people. It's it's really cool to see what happens. Now I'm going to come at you with some hard hitting questions, some non music questions. Like, um, I'm sure all of our listeners are dying to know, do you have a favorite food, Justin? And if it is, what is it? A favorite food. Um, I gotta say, man, I'm a huge pizza fan. I love pizza, all kinds of pizza from, from anywhere. Have you, have you been to New York? Have you been able to have good New York pizza? I have. I've had New York pizza. I've had Chicago pizza. I've had Atlanta pizza. Atlanta pizza is not nearly as good. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine. But, I mix. but yeah, I, I, yeah, I love. I just love pizza, man. I, I love them both. I can't. I can't pick a winner. I was just gonna say, yeah. If you ever wanted to alienate an audience or a group of fans, pick Chicago or New York style pizza, because <laughs> that's that's a surefire way to piss at least half half your fans off. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like them both, man. It, yeah, you know, I'm. I'm split down the middle. I think they're both delicious because they're pizza. You know, I mean, you can't eat it. So, well, that's that's good. Yeah, I always like to, you know, when I'm talking to to artists. I mean, it's very easy to get into a rhythm of talking about music and talking about their band and their work and their stuff. It's like, you know, I, want, I like to make interviews personal and get to know the musician a bit beyond music, which is why I ask about pastimes, my favorite foods, and stuff like that. It's just, I feel like it's. It's different, you know. It's very easy to do the the Rolling Stone or the the Fuse thing and just go, oh, your music, you know. When did the album come out? Great, thanks. Take care, you know. 
it, 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 oh yeah, no, it's refreshing to have some new questions. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it, and it's also fun to, as a fan of music, is to get to chat with someone one on one in a more relaxed way and get that kind of information out there. You know, a lot of a lot of short form interviews are, you know, very bing bang. You know, when's the album coming out? What's your favorite song? You know, when are you coming back? And and that's it. You know, I I, I modeled this this show after a lot of other podcasters who I'm a fan of who just kind of chat, you know, make it more relaxed and get to know a side of the artist or, or musician that you might not see on stage or on TV or anywhere else, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm all yours. Just be gentle. <laughs> I promise. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so rough. I, uh, I, I play nice. <laughs> I promise. But, uh, but it, it's refreshing. I mean, I, I, I'm very thankful for Shauna Pavement because she's put me in touch with a lot of really great artists from the label. Like I got to talk to Mark from, uh, Mark Young from Head PE and I spoke to Jesse from, um, Empress and Elephants. And I think the one thing I've really learned chatting with musicians is, you know, it's very easy to get hung up on how musicians are these, these badasses who rock these stages, but they're, they're people and they, you know, they, they, okay. which, which is always nice, you know. Uh, it's very easy to get overwhelmed when speaking to musicians and it's nice to humanize the people playing because you know they're just like everybody else they like music they like pizza you know the whole nine yards yeah yeah we're 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 a collective group of guys who like to hunt and fish and cars and 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 music which just happens to be one of those things and uh yeah we i mean i i like talking to people too uh, you know, I'm, I'm not much of a people person as, as far as walking up to ran, random strangers or whatnot. But you know, if <laughs> if, if I'm going to be talking to someone, like let's 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 get down to it, man. Let's let's do it. <laughs> let, let, let's have an intense chat. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you talked about cars and TV and food. Do you have a, a favorite um, movie? Do you go to the movies at all while you're on tour or while you're working on music? Uh yeah, I'm a I'm a huge movie person. I'd rather watch movies than TV any day. Um, a lot of old stuff. I love a lot of old British comedies, like uh, The Young Ones. Uh, sure. And uh, you know, Monty Python: The Search for the Holy Grail is like one of my favorites up there, along with Army of Darkness. You're now you're speaking my language. Army of Darkness is one of those movies that I saw as a kid. And I'm like. Oh, horror movies can be cheesy and stupid also and hilarious, you know. Plus, who doesn't love Bruce Campbell? Yeah, yeah, the the whole Evil Dead series. Um anything that he's ever done, really, in 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 that genre is just I love. I just absolutely love it cuz I find the humor in it and and uh, my brother is the biggest horror film flick lover I have ever seen in my life. Oh yeah. His whole living, well, he has a separate living room that he and his wife are allowed to watch TV in. <laughs> and <laughs> his horror, horror room living room, which is just nothing but framed old posters from, you know, Nightmare, uh, the, like some of the first stuff, you know. Sure. Now, I, you know, I'm, I'm screwing it up, which he's probably going to kill me over. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the time, dude. But, you know, he's, it, it's just endless. It, it's just endless toys and, and uh, like statue figures. I don't mean toys. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't call it collectors, <laughs> a, you know, action figure collection, just toys, because, you know, that's sure for right, my brother, and he's, he's my older brother, so I, I got to give him hell. Yeah, there you go. I was just about to ask, is he older than younger? Um, is, what does he think of your rock and roll career? Does he Is he a fan of uh, heavy metal music? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a big influence as far as what I what, what I grew up listening to, you know, because he was older, so he got to get the Megadeth tape and uh, the Metallic tapes and and you know, all sorts of you know Rob Zombie. I got to hear everything through him, so he was my outlet. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of giving him props on that. So you know, give me hell about the toy situation. There you go. You can say, listen, you know, keep listening. It gets better, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that, that was my that was my scapegoat. <laughs> there you go. Um, no, yeah, I was the same way growing up. I mean, uh, I had an older brother. He's actually nine years older than me. So I remember when I first started kind of really getting into music, I heard Basket Case by Green Day on the radio. And I was like, oh, that's pretty awesome. And found out my brother had that record, Dookie. Um, and I held on to that record of his for about a year until he was going away to college and realized, 
where's my CD? Matt, do you still have this? And I was not too happy when he realized I had had that album for a year and why he couldn't find it. With <laughs> it all the time. I, I, I stole stuff from him all the time. Uh, I stole his Green Day Dickie album. I stole his Offspring album. I stole, gosh, I stole so many things from him. I feel like as a little brother, it's your duty to drive your older brother nuts. Well, yeah, yeah. Because at one point, you know, he was young enough, but big enough to get away with whatever he wanted to do to me. You know, because if we were outside of home, you know, I mean, back when we were growing up, I mean, you walk, we walked to school and, you know, the typical grandpa story that you hear, like through the snow uphill. I mean, that was legit where we grew up. Right. So that was a lot of free time when mom and dad went around. <laughs> And he used to beat my ass on a daily basis. So you know what? It was my payback. <laughs> That's right. You know, <laughs> I came second. I'm going to smooth things over when you move out. You know. <laughs> sure, of course. You know, yeah, that, that's what it's always about. They move out first. So you get you get to be the only child in the house for a while. And then they mm-hmm. can't give you hell anymore. Exactly. And then and then you, you get to the smooth end of the parenting. Because one of them has moved out, so mom and dad are a little more relaxed. Exactly. Um, well, I just want to say, Justin, this has been a pleasure. I really want to thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Um, I wish you all the luck in the world with the new EP, um, which, again, for the listeners, when does what's the date of the release of the EP? August 19th. August 19th. Um, and definitely I'll keep an eye out for that video and the tour if you ever come to New York. You've got my phone number. Definitely hit me up. I'd love to come see you guys live. Um, but uh, but this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for doing the interview. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Yeah, and um, when it goes up, I'll let Shauna know and Shahaba reach out to you. Um, we release these episodes on biweekly, and uh, I have a few others coming out before this. So probably towards the end of the month, early next month is when it'll go up. But uh, but I'll definitely hit you up so you know and uh, and send you the link so you can check it out once it's up. Awesome, man. Uh, yeah, when we get it, we'll we'll blast it out to everybody that's on our page that may not know you guys, and, or oh. maybe doesn't know you guys. But yeah, but we'll we'll make sure we blast it on both ends too. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, promo- uh, we support each other, right? You know, self promotion yeah. is, is a tough business, but uh, but yeah. So thank you again, and you have a great night, and uh, I appreciate your time, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks. Take care. Bye. If you enjoyed these interviews, please subscribe to this and the Crash Chords podcast on iTunes, where you can also rate us and review us. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Crash Chords Web, our Tumblr, and our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post in the comment area below each post. And keep the discussion going, because remember, music is life, and life is good.